<laughs> well, that's my, uh, okay, I'll show you right now. This is especially for Dave Cutler. I want to make sure that he knows, he knows my nickname, okay? Swamp Dog, Dave, you remember that, okay? I got my hat to prove it, all right? Don't forget it. When he first came up and talked to me, you couldn't understand a word he said because of his accent. I, and I'm not kidding. We would get Wayne Mathern that also went to the LSU whenever we wanted to talk to Ron. I mean, we were afraid he might be dying from something and we weren't knowing it. Now, sometimes he gets to, to talking very fast, which he calls Cajun language, and we don't know what, what it is, but, you know, he gets to going. When he gets excited, he just starts to rambling on and on. And then he has to wipe his mouth to make sure he doesn't spit on anybody. <laughs> well, it's second and ten. And Watts goes down back at the 23. In my opinion, Ron S. Tate, when I played, was our pass rush. In fact, to me, he was one of the few guys in football that I considered, you know, a football player's football player, you know, like a man's man. He knew the game. He knew how to read, you know. Plus, he was quick. He could do it all. And, and if you single team walked him, he was going to get in on the play. And if you ran away from him, he would catch you from behind, because not only being quick, he was very fast. Good play by Este, nailed him back of the line of scrimmage. A loss will be at least a couple. Well, growing up in southern Louisiana as a young boy, uh, it was a great place. I really enjoyed it, uh, a sporting state, you know, of fishing and hunting. And uh, my dad was really involved in it. And so he, you know, we had three boys, and uh, he got us involved. I was the baby of the family. And of course, uh, the two older brothers played football and was involved in football. And uh, my dad was really proud of him. And uh, in Louisiana, playing football and especially dreaming to play at LSU was something that was, you know, just great uh, for anybody in Louisiana. 1893 to 1993, a golden century for LSU football. 1963, my brother, uh, middle brother, Maxie, he signed a scholarship to play football with LSU. I can remember my dad uh, getting some newspaper clippings, and then he would go all around town showing everybody the newspaper clippings and, you know, uh, what Maxie was doing and how good he was doing and, you know, how proud he was of him and everything. And But in 1964, uh, he died in a car accident. And that really devastated my mom and dad. And um, I had to go pick up my, my dad coming off the oil rigs from the Gulf of Mexico. And when my dad stepped off the plane and he saw us, you know, the uh, first thing he said was, what do I have to live for now? And uh, I was 15 years old and I was in the ninth grade. And I didn't really do anything or say anything, but deep down inside, I said, here I am. Uh, at that time, I said that I'm going to be the best football player I can be. Made it through high school as one of the top defensive linemen in the state of Louisiana. It was 1968. Ended up signing a scholarship with the LSU Tigers, just like my brother did, a four-year scholarship and everything paid for. And two weeks after I signed my scholarship, my dad died of bone cancer. And then I said, what do I have to live for? But, you know, going to LSU, it was a big challenge for me. Um, and, and I just, you know, believed that my dad wanted me to keep doing what I was doing. Good fake by Sonny Wade. He's under pressure. However, he loses the football. The Eskimos have recovered. Ron Este has the ball. He knew the game, and he, he dedicated himself to becoming really great at it. You know, playing in nine great cups, really, uh, you know, out of ten years, we were there. Played in nine and won six of them. Oh, 
Let it be ready to go. Javier, you and Jackie would have the back of the side end combo depending on what they do. Okay, the screen fans, that's it. Let's go now, let's go. I can't play anymore, but now as a coach, I can play through the players. And, and that's exciting. He's an emotional coach. He's a knowledgeable coach. And I know the guys respect him because of not only what he did in the league, but because he only wants what's best for the players. 20 some sack season and and you know he's tied with the record or has the record for sacks in the game, like five five sacks a game. I mean it's, it's unbelievable. And as a D lineman, those are the kind of things that you know I would try to strive for in my career. Met him in high school and I was on one of the cheering squads and um, we started dating between our uh, junior and senior year and uh, we've been together ever since. There's no cooking in Louisiana without onions. In South Louisiana, in Cajun country, the we men do lots of cooking. The um, there's lots of hunting and fishing that goes on and they come home and prepare the meal. Um, they enjoy it. So, yeah, he's a good cook. Okay, the screen, now we got to be alert for the screen, okay? I'm if 55 the years old and my quest is still on. <laughs> uh, being uh, inducted into the Canadian Hall of Fame, and, uh, it's just top of the mountain to me. I feel like I have won the Academy Award. Don't turn your back.